Day four, sober October. I realized that I just, you know, I just enjoy weed. Like, I, I smoked enough to keep me from being distracted from my work, but it seems now that I've replaced uh, smoking with working, like, more. So that could be a good thing, right? Like, it could be a good thing that I'm posting more videos on YouTube and stuff, um, but it seems like I'm hiding from some sort of psychosis that I don't want to admit. Um, it also could not be that, but... Uh, you know, you never know with these kind of things, unless you talk to a therapist. I was arrested and got in trouble with the law related to weed, or like vaguely related to weed. Being black and being in the world is kind of weird, uh, especially if you're in like the United States. It's funny because as a black dude, I'm like, oh, you know, I've only been arrested twice, <laughs> right? So here's how it goes. New York City, kind of gave me this false idea of what it meant to be black and growing up my you know my my father is a retired law enforcement officer so I already had like this uninformed view of how things go like me thinking I can get away with a lot more I, I sped a lot in college my, I went over the speed limit a lot. I've been pulled over so many times in college. I've like talked to police officers at my house um, when I was in college. I would throw parties all the time, so, and I was upstate New York, so like, they would be drinking and underage drinking and smoking and all this other kind of stuff, but like, I just assumed from that I would never get in trouble, so. Fast forward, I had been invited to go play at South by Southwest. I went, I had a great time, I decided to move to Austin. And the night before I went to go move to Austin, I was with Mario B. And I went to go pick up like a little 20 bag, like, I just, you know, I went to just go get just a little something for the ride for the next day. Um, and I even like smoked some that night. And I'm on the way back home and I, I had my headlight out. That's how they fucking get you. And I forgot to turn on my high beam. So of course I'm like driving back home and I'm a fucking idiot. Like I, you know, I, like I said, I was like, I thought I was not gonna get in trouble for being me. I, I had left my ID in my other pants. Like you shouldn't be driving without a license. I really didn't think I would get pulled over. This was like years ago. This is like 2013. They pull us over. I'm like, fuck, you know? And I didn't take whatever it was that was in my pocket out of my pocket. Like I left it there. I didn't think I'd get pulled out the car. Like I didn't, I just, it just happened so fast. And you don't want to get pulled over and start going in your pockets too. Um, I should have just took this shit out of my pocket. I didn't think it would escalate. I thought they would just let me go because I did have my father's like the get out of jail free card, like the, the police officer card. There's like a PBA card or something or whatever. So they pulled me over. One thing leads to another. I don't have my ID. They get the PBA card. They see it, but they, they got to run the routine. They got to like check me. So they asked me to step out the car. Now, I'm lucky they didn't arrest me. But as they're like patting me down, he's like, hey, do you have anything on you? And I'm like, yeah, I do. I have some, some bud, like, you know, in that pocket, just in, the, in there. And he was like, cool, um, took it out. And he gave me a warning so, and, and it was like a ticket. So, so it was like a ticket to get my headlight fixed. And it was a little pink slip. And he's like, oh yeah, that's just a warning. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna arrest you or do you know, it's nothing like that. And I was like, cool. I figured that was it, and I didn't read it, and I was, I was a fucking idiot, and I left the next day to go to Texas. We'll come back to the me getting arrested thing a little later, but while I'm in Texas now, I'm still vibing off of this whole, like, New York thing. I feel inv invincible. I was like, I just got, you know, like, I came so close to getting in trouble, and nothing happened. I was like, man, as long as I'm a good kid, a good guy, nothing will really happen to me, and I was sadly mistaken because in Texas... Being black is a crime, um, <laughs> especially if you're at the wrong place at the wrong time. Being black is a fucking crime. Uh, it, it's been like 30 days. Austin's a party town. I'm partying. Uh, I'm lucky that I, that I wasn't, um, you know, 
a lot more hurt or in a lot more trouble than I than I got into in Texas. I'm not aware of these things in Austin yet. I was hanging around with somebody who didn't really care about me much. Like he cared about me, but he he didn't really have my best interests in mind. So he really didn't give a shit about me. And uh, it was more important for him to have fun than it was for him to be smart. Like I always thought being smart was being smart. He kind of thought being smart was being like paranoid or like being a pussy, like, you know, that kind of thing. So whatever, uh, we go out this one night and we're like drinking we're like drinking and smoking and I'm always smoking but I didn't have anything on me um I guess we had smoked we're like drinking or I had I had popped a molly I mean that was like a little after my molly days so like I had done molly a lot more in college than I did in uh, like afterwards and you know you just get tired of it and and it wears you out but this one night I was feeling good somebody had some and I'm like fucking let's do it and I'm like drinking too oh look there's cops ha 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 like what is that why are they just standing on the corner so um I'm I'm drinking and I'm having a good time side note Weed positively affects my social. It makes me a little more, more patient with people. Alcohol doesn't positively affect my social. Alcohol makes me less scared to say shit. I just say dumb shit or I just like have no, I have even less patience too. And, I, and everything starts to turn into like sex. Everything turns into like, I wanna fuck or I'm trying to grab somebody to fuck or some dumb shit. Molly, however, it, it, it makes me cool. It like, it like vibes me out, man, you know? I'm like having, I thoroughly am enjoying myself. Like DJs that I thought would suck, like they're like, this guy's great. Like, you know, it's fun. So, having a good time. I had done this so many times before, it wasn't a problem. But I remember when things went awry. My homie turned around, we, we, we were going place to place, we were going like maybe two or three venues at this point. And I remember we went to Barbarella's in Austin, Texas big ass fucking venue if you've ever been there you know it's an incredible venue it's like it has three dance floors and it's no stairs so it's all there's a one inside one in the back one on the, and there's like two bar three bars it's ridiculous he turns around to me and he like has a tray of of fireball shots and i'm like bro no more shots after this or i just remember being like bro don't give me any more shots and he turned around and just passed me a shot. Now, you're fucking vibing. You're feeling good. You're not going to be... You're not thinking like, oh, I don't want to tell him no because I don't want him to think I'm cool. No. you fucking like, what's one more shot, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Cigarettes, chain smoking them. Didn't even know how many I had smoking that night. Doesn't matter. Like, I'm having a great time. Dancing, all this other shit. Uh, but still very in tune. And that's why I enjoy Molly, because Molly has me in tune. We were having such a good time, and I was vibing, the ladies were feeling it, everything, everything was happening, everything was great. And then, I was like, you know what, I need to take a second to breathe. So, I like, stepped out. I literally was like, I'm gonna take a minute, I'm gonna go, kind of have a seat outside, or like, take a breather. So I stepped out the venue, my homie didn't see where I went, and I went over to like, the curb, like this. Now, here in New York, if you sit on the curb, you can rest. You know, this is resting. And there's cars here, but even if there were no cars here, nobody's driving this close. Yo, in Austin, it's a different story, man. Everybody's got fucking trucks. And I was sitting like on the curb and I just remember cars zooming by. And I was like, damn, they're gonna run me over and not give a fuck. So let me get away from this curb. So I like walked away from the venue for a second. I kind of went. I'm like looking for some space, people are like smoking and standing, I don't wanna really talk to anybody. And I see a parking lot next to the, to the venue. So I'm like, yo, and it's well lit too. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm a black dude at night, I should not be out here be looking sketchy and being in a sketchy area. Let me go sit in a place where everyone can see me. So I sat, just I walked like 10 steps into this parking lot, and man, it was well lit too. It was like a multi-stacked parking lot. Whatever the case may be, I'm sitting there, you know, just at the entrance almost even. And before I knew it, two cop cars rolled up like right next to each other like fucking transformers and uh and while they're talking to me you know they, they come over to me and they're like hey 
you know, what you doing? And I told him, you know, I'm waiting for my friends. I'm just chilling. And he was like, uh, what do you have on you? And I was like, nothing. And so he's like, you know, what's in your pocket? So I like took out my ID I had on me and I took out my get out of jail free card and I showed it to him and he was like, yeah, you you can hold on to that. And he gave it back to me and he took my ID and he ran my name and, and then another cop car comes and I'm like, what the fuck, man? They're talking to each other. And dude just comes back over to me and says, hey, uh, we're going to take you downtown for criminal trespassing. And I was like, to jail? And he was like, yep. I was like, to jail, jail? And he was like, yep. And I was just like, I can't do two hands. I don't have my, I don't have my head set on. I just, I just went. I like, I'm not going to fight him. Yo, I know, I know what happens when black dudes fight fucking cops and resist. They fucking get shot. They get jumped by six dudes. I wasn't trying to have that shit. They were waiting for me to get froggy. So I went. It was the most comfortable fucking car ride of my life. I'm looking up at the sky like, oh man, the sky was so beautiful. The ride was smooth. Cop cars are so smooth and fast and comfortable. And then things just got bad very quickly. I was just like sitting in fucking like holding. It was Cinco de Cuatro. So Cinco de Mayo was the next day. It was a Friday night. Bro, I was there for like three, four days. I was there till Monday morning, really early. Um, because so many people were coming in that, that weekend, because Austin's a fucking drunk party town, and they arrest people for any fucking, you have liquor, and you where you're not supposed to be, they're like, you're done. I wasn't fully aware of this, and my homie didn't really look out for me about this. I should have been even more careful. Yo, I was, <laughs> it was just not good news. I realized quickly I wasn't where I was supposed to be, and as you sober up, you're like, man, this is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not one of these people. Like, I was sitting next to this little Mexican dude, and he had to be like 16, 17, man. He goes, yo, what you in for? You know how that goes. And, they, and I'm like, you know, blah, blah, blah. He, and then he's like, yo, they tase me, bro. And he like lifts up his shirt and he showed me like a mark, a taser mark on his, on his like chest. And I, and I was like, why did they tase you? He's like, cause I fucking ran. <laughs> and I was like, damn, like this kid's a fucking idiot. <laughs> but be that as it may, you know, hours, hours, hours go by. I'm staying quiet. There are people screaming. There are people, it's everything you'd imagine. There are people fucking acting like assholes, acting like they shouldn't be there. People spitting, just crazy shit. And after a day or so, because there were so many people coming in, they needed to move us out of holding into somewhere where we wouldn't take up so much room. So they had to fucking take, like, switch out my clothes and bring me upstairs and put me in a cell. They, and they gave me stripes, like, they, they stripe, they, they take your clothes, put it in a locker, and you get fucking the two-piece striped suit. They, like, they, like, feel your balls up. They, like, look in your pants. They're, like, checking all of your fucking air, cr- corners and crevices to make sure you don't have any weapons. So it was definitely, I felt violated. I mean, because in all honesty, those cops could have told me, you can't stand here, you got to get out of this parking lot. And I would have moved. I was in tune enough to move out of harm's way. I was in tune enough to move there out of harm's way. So they switched me in the stripes and that is when I decided to call my father because I figured getting arrested wouldn't be the best bet to call my dad back in New York. So I called him and I just told him what's up. I said, hey man, look, they're switching us out uh, to go get um, stripes on and they're bringing me upstairs. So, and he's like, so what do you want me to do? And it's like, no, nothing, I'm just informing you. And he's like, well, be careful in the showers. I uh, and you know and that's and there was nothing he could do it was just like I know he fucking felt disappointed he didn't raise me to be a criminal or to be arrested you get a criminal record all this dumb shit especially as a black dude nobody cares what actually happened they just look at your criminal record yeah. and they give me a fucking stupid ass blanket and they fucking put me in a cell and I'm there for whoever knows how the fuck long until the and then Sunday came and then the, the judge couldn't see us and then all this bullshit and you gotta wait till we're early early Monday and then by that point no one knows where we've been all weekend. You know, the dude that I had already called to tell him I was there, he was like, oh, dude, I thought you went home. I thought you went to go hook up with somebody. I'm like, nah, man, why didn't you, like, check up on me? He's like, no, nah, I just thought you went home, and when I didn't see you home, I was like, I thought you, like, went over to a girl's house. And he was like, and I was like, nah, dude, I'm fucking arrested. He was like, yo, well, I mean, look on the bright side. He was like, now you got a little bit of street cred. That was one of the last times I talked to that dude. Regardless, um, you know, that was a lesson I had to learn. That was something I had to go through. 
you know, I'm grateful for my the current job that I had that was very understanding. Um, I, it was just a mess to, to kind of re-untangle after that, that Monday morning, you know. Like, there was just a lot of stuff I had to, like, kind of fix. Um, and, you know, I'm, like, blessed that I wasn't worse off than I, than I ended up. We did borrow someone's car that night, you know, and even though we weren't, like, drinking and driving, you know, if it, it, it's, like, very possible that it could have gotten to that level. Uh, and it could have went, went to the point where we could have put, put ourselves in harm's way, like, aside from stupid-ass police. So... I'm just grateful that it didn't get that bad. I, you know, I bring the car back to where it should be. Mind you, this is my first month in Austin. I'm still kind of figuring out the lay of the land. And, I, and I, then I go back to work and I, life goes on. And, and from that point on, I was like, chill. This court-appointed lawyer, which they're fucking shitty. Um, the court-appointed lawyer, he, like every time he showed up, he like forgot what the fucking case was or he forgot who I was or he forgot what was going on. He, he always, I always had to remind him and we were always pushing the date back to like get things checked up on and moved out and, and it couldn't have been that complicated. And, and when, every time I told him the story, here's the killer part. Every time I told him what, what happened or what, what, what the thing was, he'd be like, yo, you know why they arrested you, right? I'm like, why? And he goes, and he like rub, and he like points to his skin, points to this color of my skin. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but is that like a legitimate argument in court? Like, you can't just be like, oh, you arrest me because I'm black. And he begged to differ. He thought it could be something. He was ready to take it on. And who the fuck? A court appointed lawyer, of course, wants to fucking try a case. Like, why the fuck not? It would look good for him if he won that. Nah, man, I wasn't trying to become a civil rights case. I, I, I did pop a molly and I was, you know, drinking that night. And even though I wasn't belligerent or like being a criminal and all that shit, I'm just sure that's why they grabbed me. One thing leads to another. I kind of get rid of that guy. I got a, be a much better lawyer, which, which costs a lot of money um, or more money than I had at the time. Shout out to my parents for looking out for me, man. Shitty shit, man. I owe them so much. But I was fucking young. I was like 22, 23, man. And like, not to say that that's young. It's just like, it ain't 28. <laughs> the real lawyer comes and he's like, and within a matter of hours, he fixes the situation. He's like, okay, basically the state of Texas is, is saying that criminal trespassing is like a fucking, it's not a felony, but it's like a, there's something between a misdemeanor and a felony. I'm not 100% sure. It's some sort of infraction that's worse than a fucking misdemeanor. But they're like, yo, look, you're a good guy, you've never been arrested, all this other shit, whoop de whoop you got a job, you got people that vouch for you, your parents, all this other bullshit. And they, they bargained me down to public intoxication, which is what they really should have given me in the first place, or, you know, it should have been, but that's the thing. They, like, shoot high, see where they land. It's a great tactic. And I had to take 20 hours of community service, or do 20 hours of community service, and I had to take an eight-hour don't drink course. And it was essentially a video that was made to explain why it's not good to drink so much in Austin or Texas. And I, I get it, like, I got it. I, I, I got the message, you know? It's also very funny because then I was just doing community service for the next however long, man, trying to get 20, 24 hours of community service in. And like, and then you fucking feel like a slave because you're in Texas and then everybody's white and everybody's speaking with a southern accent and they're all looking at you like you fucking raped their whole generation. And I worked at a consignment store. You got to choose your location, but I worked at a consignment store where I was like, it was like a, um, like a Goodwill store. So I'm at the store doing my 20 hours and I learned a lot about the prison industrial complex. I learned a lot about free labor. I learned a lot about um, what is happening in the world. Like, they, you know, America used to be slavery and then they stopped slavery and they made it a crime to not have a job and all the slaves didn't have a job. So they arrested all the slaves who were on the street without a job and then they just put them back in the chain gangs and made them work and do all that stuff. Prison just kind of sets people up to go give free labor. So it's like free labor, really, it's slavery because I was drinking. Um, or whatever I was doing, man. I didn't, I was, I was literally, it's maybe because they didn't like the way I looked. Like there were so many other ways to deal with that situation. And if you know me, you know how I am. I've never, never been the type to want to die or fight a cop or be belligerent, but be that as it may, I, I didn't get in trouble again. Fast forward, I'm back to New York a few years later and it's fucking hilarious because now I'm with another homie and when I'm, I'm doing him a favor, we're driving, we're transporting like a, a dresser he made, my homie Mikhail. 
And I had all my paperwork, everything was fine. I was a good guy, I was a good kid, and we're, dri we're just driving the city. And I made a wrong turn. I guess I like I couldn't turn. There was like one street that was like buses only. And my homie said I can go up on the street, but I couldn't. And I was supposed to make a left. Yo, and by the time I realized it was too late, and it was a cop waiting there. It was in fucking Williamsburg. And or Greenpoint or whatever the fuck, man. And I'd like, who hangs out there? Nobody hangs out there except for hipsters. Or at least when I got back. Like, and that's why I left in the first place, because New York was changing in a weird way. The cop, you know, pulls me over. License registration, I'm like, word, blah, blah, blah. I didn't have any weed on me that time, and I'm glad. And then he like goes to the car and comes back, and he's like, you have a warrant out for your arrest. And I'm like, for what? And he's like, it doesn't say. What, do you have a warrant out? And I'm like, mm, I, I shouldn't, I don't think so. And he's like, uh, sir, please step out of the car. I'm like, no, no, no. He's like, sir, please step out of the car. I'm like, no, he's like, step out. And I'm like, fuck. So I get out of the car, puts the cuffs on, I immediately told my homie to call my dad because my dad being an ex-cop, like, I just wanted to inform him. Plus I had um, my, my parents' vehicle at the time because I was using their van to transport this, uh, this dresser. Mind you, this is like years after like I had been done anything delinquent, but the system is like sticky as fuck and it keeps you stuck. So I'm in the cell in Williamsburg and they're asking me all these questions about like who, what I did, where I did it, all that. and I forgot about the weed thing honestly because I didn't think that was a thing, and, and I didn't want to be like, oh yeah, I had weed on me one time, and you know, they gave me a ticket, but that pink ticket said I was supposed to go to court, and I was supposed to go to court after I planned on leaving to Austin or Texas the next day, and I was young, and I probably didn't think it was that serious, but I didn't know it was gonna turn into a warrant. Yo, if you get a warning ticket, go to the court date. So now, you know, my pops comes through, he, you know, he, he drops a name and a badge and I get expedited through. His badge and his, like, officer status works way better here in New York for me. Um, just because they, it's a different jurisdiction and, and they understand the, the agencies better here. They're more familiar. So I got expedited through, not like unarrested. No, I got pushed through just basically instead of waiting three days like I did in Texas, to see a judge, I kind of got to see a judge a little quicker. I will not even gonna fucking talk about who I was in holding with in Brooklyn in that fucking, those down there. That was a whole nother other other. I was in, I was in holding with dudes who got arrested because a knife fell out of their fucking waistband because they were going to visit their baby mama in a different hood that was not in their borough. So they brought a kitchen knife just to be safe, but you're not allowed to bring kitchen knife. Like I was with some people who didn't use their brain. And I know I didn't use my brain, but there's levels of not using your brain. Anyways, the judge basically was like, yo, as long as you don't get caught with weed for the next six months, you're fine. This will be cleared up. This is whatever, 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 whatever. Then I just look like an asshole to my parents. Then I just look like some fucking drug addict dude who just smokes weed and doesn't like cops and does all this fucking bullshit and like, you know, I'll get in trouble and I'm gonna fuck my life up. It's just no way to not look like that to people who don't want you smoking weed in the first place. So that's kind of like the long story short version of like me getting arrested and truly not being a criminal for any of this. You know, the amount of things that I know people have done and the kind of things that I've seen people do in Texas and in New York and what I got in trouble for, it's just cute and hilarious. And um, my parents don't agree. So we still have differing views on that stuff. And they still think that I, you know, I'm not a smart black person for being raised in such a great environment and then throwing it all away by getting caught up in the system. Yeah, I made the wrong turn in New York, so that was my fault. And yeah, I didn't go to the court date from the first one. That was my fault. But that Texas situation, that really was some whole other shit. So, you know, I just say, yo, be smart where you are and just watch your tail, watch your laws. I mean, there's no really moral of this story, to be honest. I'm sure I'm incriminating myself in some ways, but um, I will say this. The interesting part about this whole situation was when I finally did get money to pay for a lawyer for my Texas case, he went in, in a matter of minutes, he got the police report for my arrest. And in the police report, it says, we noticed that there was forced entry into this parking lot. Now mind you, there was no gate, 
There was no fence. There was no way. Like, there was no forced entry. And I started to see language in the report that really made me look like I did some shit I didn't do. And if I'd have brought the case to trial, I would have lost and fucking been to jail. Like, so the, it's almost like you're forced to kind of take this bargain that they give you. Like, they're doing you a favor. Um, and that just blew my mind, man. And I had to, you know, not that I had to see that in order to learn it. I just, I didn't want to believe that the fucking country was all that sideways. But be that as it may, uh, I still enjoy weed. I'm moving to Puerto Rico fairly soon. The shit's legal over there. From that point on, like, it really stuck with me. Like, yo, being black in America, like, it's almost like fucking Nazi time, man. It's like, you gotta have your ID on you because if you don't, you're fucking bound to go to jail. Like, yo, the amount of times that I didn't get arrested or didn't get asked any questions if I had my ID and my get out of jail free card in New York was ridiculous. Like, I got away with shit I should not have gotten away with. I got away with like felonies. Like, I sped past the speed limit once like so high that my car became technically a, a weapon. And he told me that because I showed him the badge and, and the ID and he, you know, he called my father. He was like, give me your father's number. He was mad, he had to let me go. Out of respect for other cops, but I, it's almost like I abused that. So when I was in Texas, you know, just having my ID on me saved me more than what I would have gotten saved if I didn't. And now every time I leave the house, I carry my ID on me because at any point someone could be like, let me see your ID. I'm going to show it to them. I'm not one of those motherfuckers that's like, oh, you know, you know, that's my right to not have to show you this. I, who are you? What's your name and your badge number? I'm like, motherfucker, here. I, w I don't mean to be causing any trouble. Yes, I'm master, sir. Oz is just walking and Oz is just a dumb nigga. And I just don't really want to cause no trouble because I do not want to go to jail or be with other motherfuckers that really don't give a fuck about what they got going on. We do what we can. It's part of the reason why I'm leaving the mainland and, and going to Puerto Rico, just so that I can like kind of live a different textured life where it, you know, even the cops all are brown. <laughs> It, it might it might help my sanity a little bit don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with all the bullshit uh, and thank you for listening i love you and uh i'll see you tomorrow deuces